Delighted to welcome back on the show. It's been quite a while since we caught up. I think it was before um, his fight against Uriah Faber. He's a huge fight coming up this weekend at UFC Fight Night 82 in Salt Lake City. And that is Alex Kacheres. Alex, first of all, how are you, my friend? Great to have you back on the show. How are things? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good, man. Yeah, can't complain. Uh, had a few last night. Uh, a few points again, so I'm uh, a bit dusty today, but I'm okay getting over <laughs> Oh, I was, bro. <laughs> Alex, huge fight coming up for you. Your first um, UFC main event. You must be super excited. Oh, yeah, I am. Okay. You've talked about um, your maturity um, in the past. You said you've, you've you found your inner child. Um, you know, explain a little bit more what you meant when you, when you said that. Um... I guess what I what I meant is that uh, I guess um, not that I stopped caring, but I guess uh, realizing that um, life is not so serious. Uh, I guess you know. <laughs> <laughs> Has that been you know that sort of attitude that you've taken? Um, we've seen you improve, obviously, a huge amount since your days as the Ultimate Fighter. Um, you know, having that attitude, has that, you know, led to your improvement as a mixed martial artist? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I'm not taking things so serious, like, uh, like, like, like I said before, you know, like, don't take things seriously. Or I, I believe when anybody don't stop taking things so seriously, they, they tend to perform better, you know. It's almost you're taking off the pressure that you add on to yourself. Um, of the, the universal pressure is always going to be there. You know, we're always going to have to, most of the time, face adversity if we want to change and this uncomfortableness if we want to change and adapt and grow in these situations. But most of the time, we ourselves defeat ourselves before we even arrive um, into whatever situation that we're dealing with. You know, as human beings, we, we tend to have this, um, this so-called grown-up way of looking at things where we call it being a realist or or being skeptical where we're just defeating ourselves before we even know the outcome and or we just worrying about the outcome and not letting ourselves be ourselves rather i should say you've talked about deja vu uh, as well in the past um you know you talked about it in the Cole miller fight um i think he had you in an arm bar at one point you mentioned that you you said you saw in the past that um you tapped to that, and obviously you you won the fight, and um, for your decision. Is that something that happens on a, on a regular basis with you? Oh yeah, man. Even in sparring, you know, like my the, my last session of sparring was well, yesterday. Um, did five rounds yesterday, and even and and even people that I I was sparring, even though I was sparring with somebody that I just met during this camp, and I knew I didn't know him previously in the past, but it yeah. felt like we've done this countless times before, and uh, yeah, this happens pretty often. Um, maybe, nah, I mean, you can call it whatever it is. Maybe I'm getting hit in the head too hard and I'm just having little flashbacks. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in all honesty, um, no, definitely there's some there's some crazy deja vu going on. I mean, even before this fight, there's a lot of things that I'm seeing. And uh, and it's just... Um, what, have, what have you seen, Alex? Um, I, I, Every possible outcome. And that's what I always see. I see every single possible outcome and I see how it plays out um, the before and after effects of everything. So um, there is no, it's not like I'm visualizing me winning all the time. No, I see every single possible outcome, the most realistic thing, the things that are just not manifested yet. So it is everything and nothing at the same time. You spoke about that. You said, you know, you saw Carl Miller giving you an arm, or, you know, giving you an arm bar and you tapped um, when you saw it in the past, but how, how do you um, eradicate the negatives, um, the visions that you see uh, out of your mind? Well, the thing is, they're necessary. They're then, the negatives and the positives are necessary. You can't, and I wouldn't call them negative for positive, you know, there, there, there is no negative and positive. The, the things we have to realize is that there are only two people inside of that cage. Yeah. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you can say you're trying, you, you're increasing your chances by training harder and doing this and doing and, and, and this, that, and the, and the fifth. But in reality, there's only a 50 50 percent chance one person has to walk out with their hand raised. Um, you've seen it, you, I've seen it oftentimes where the, be, the better fighter gets clipped 
that one shot in the beginning of the round and then the fight's over, anything can happen. So just understanding that and just knowing that that is a possibility, it definitely takes a load off your shoulders, um, realizing that you're not in control. You you're never in control. Yeah, we saw that last night, obviously, with, you know, Robbie Lawler, you getting clipped by, by Tyron and, and losing the fight in the first round. You know, your Instagram as well, I find it, find it very interesting. It's I uh, underscore am underscore here underscore now underscore Alex. You know, what's the meaning behind that? Obviously, it's, it's something to do with what you've been saying there. You know, you've, uh, you've progressed and developed as, as, as a human being uh, and as a mixed martial artist. Well, I guess there, um, it's easy to say that, uh, just, um, um, instead of trying to see yourself in the future and, or see your, or think about what you've done to prepare or what you're going to do in the future, the most that you can ask for is to be present in the present. You know, the, that's the most that we can ask for is that we're here now. And this is the only thing that we can control are these little moments. Yeah. You know, we can't think about winning the fight. We can't think about winning this move or the situation or winning even the moment. Just being in the moment is the most that we can ask for. We have to be there or else we can't act upon that moment. So me saying that I am here now, I guess I would be saying that um, nothing else matters but mm -hmm. the present, you know, or nothing else matters but what you do at that moment because you'll never be there again. You know, yeah. and you're not there yet, so we can't dwell on it, and we can't try and predict what's going to happen either. Obviously, you know, you you took a chance, as you said there. You know, living in the moment, being in the moment, being the present uh, against Cole Miller. Obviously, it's paid off, and and as a direct result of that victory, um, this fight has come up uh, against Yara Rodriguez. Obviously, uh, you know, a very very uh, tough opponent, a dangerous opponent. Um, how do you assess him as a fighter? Um, I, I, I wouldn't really know. I, I really gave it that much thought, to be honest with you. Okay, it's, it's, it's more about implementing what you're going to do um, in the fight. Oh, no, no, I don't really know what I'm going to do either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I know that I'm going to perform well. I know that I'm going to fight. Um, um, to call him dangerous um, and, and whatnot, I had, like, it is what it is. Um, already, anybody is dangerous. Yeah. You know, if you're in the cage, if you're in the UFC, I don't care who you are, all because he throws some, like, some kicks that are, I guess, a little bit flashy and whatnot, they would consider him dangerous because it's unpredictable. Yeah. But um, as a martial artist, as a person, you know, we're, we, we should be able to prepare ourselves for the, the worst possibilities. I don't necessarily see it as a danger. I mean... Um, I mean, I don't know. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to speak about yeah. that. It's like, it's like, I don't know the person. Um, I can't perceive him to be anything but another person. He is human there and that's as dangerous as a human can be. That's about it. You've talked, you know, and, and we've spoken, I think three or four times in the past on the show over the years. And, um, we saw you in the ultimate fighter. You were quite immature and, and you've grown. We've talked about you, you finding the inner child in yourself you've become very articulate and you know, you're a very intelligent guy and um, you revise yourself. I, I would have said, but it's probably, probably the word uh, to use. What have you done? Do you, do you read a lot of books? Do you, do you look into different philosophies? What's, you know, what has you at this point with this mindset? Um, I guess um, really it would have to be, I mean, yeah, I do read a lot. I dabble on plenty of things, but I mean, really, um, a lot of people do that, man, yeah. and it has nothing to do with anything, really. It's a, it's really, truly, and honestly asking yourself the questions that we are most afraid to ask ourselves. Um, really looking into oneself and trying to reveal the true self and your true nature. You know, um, being able to embrace how ugly we are um, brings out the beauty in, in yourself. Okay, very interesting. I guess acceptance would have to be the word and not just accepting yeah. yourself, but being able to accept yourself enough so that you can accept other people. You, you mentioned acceptance there. Obviously, you found a home in the MMA lab in Arizona. Um, it, that's obviously a huge part of this mindset and, and, and the way you conduct yourself 
um, at the moment and the way you've continued to improve yourself, uh, as you say, as a mixed martial artist and, and as a person. Um, do you feel very much accepted uh, with John Crouch and the, and the guys in the lab? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and the accept, like I said before, the accepting, the acceptance comes from oneself, you know. Um, you don't, like, you can't just expect people to accept you um, or else it won't happen. If you can't accept yourself, then nobody will yeah. accept you. Kind of like that saying that if you don't respect yourself, how do you expect anybody to respect you? You know, if you don't aim for something, how do you expect to hit it? Uh, so when it comes to people accepting you, you have to be open for that acceptance. Um, most of the time, if not all the time, um, people don't accept us or people don't treat us as equals is because we cannot see ourselves as their equal. We either see ourselves below or above them. But we have to understand that we are all on the same level because one person's struggle is not greater than the next person's struggle. Everybody has their own demons to deal with yeah. and troubles to deal with. And we have to be, how would you say, empathetic enough to see that, to accept that, that I'm not greater than you. My struggle is not greater than you. My meaning for life is better than yours. We all have to work collectively and together for a better life that benefit everybody. Definitely. No, that's a fantastic way of looking at it. How have you dealt, you know, as you say, you, you live in the moment, you live in now. Is that very much what you've implemented in your mindset? You know, you, you after the Uriah Faber fight, you went on a three-fight losing streak, then you bounced back against Marcio Fullen and obviously more recently against Cole Miller. Was that a tough time for you? Uh, definitely. Um, it, was a, it was a tough time, but at the same time, it's a... It's a learning process. I mean, if it was too much of a tough time, I would have let it eat me alive, but it obviously didn't. You know, I was able to come back and keep on going. You know, these are the, those are the times that, 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 that will test you, you know, as a human being. You know, we're always going to hit these walls. We're always going to have these obstacles that we have to overcome. Um, but we can't blame nobody else for those, and we can't expect anything from anybody else because we're facing trouble that nobody else is facing. We can't expect them to understand. Um, we have to understand that not everybody is, is, is always going to understand. Mm. And, you know, even if, you know, whether it's fans or whether it's people or somebody else talking or whatnot, it's them, you know, troubles in their lives that they have to overcome, which push them to bring out the worst in other people in yourself. So we have to, um, how would you say, give them because they're usually, they don't, they don't know what they're doing. And in all honesty, in life, you know, when I find out as, you know, people get older or as I get older, yeah. nobody knows what they're doing. Everybody's just <laughs> pretending, you know? So I just, I just admit to myself that I'm also pretending that I do not know what I'm doing. Then I can stop pretending and actually start doing something more meaningful. Yeah. Um, meaningful meaninglessly for you know like i'm not trying to do it i'm not striving um for anything i'm striving not to strive if anything you look at um you know you look at this fight coming up and, and you, you look at the division and obviously you're fighting a featherweight now um you know what are the goals for you you know is it as you said living in the moment you know looking at the bone in front of you do you care about making a title shot you know is it something if it happens it, it will happen yeah, you know, like at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, um, life is big, man. Life is big, bigger than you or me. Um, and and at the end of the day, like like life itself is not that serious, you know. Is like I don't and like people take life yeah. so seriously. It's not like we're gonna get out of life anyway. Definitely, well, <laughs> I agree with you, man. Yeah, this is, people take yeah, it way so, too seriously. And, and so, like being a title and being the best in the world at one thing really holds no value within my, if I have to ask myself honestly, is that going to make me happy? Is that going to make me feel complete? Mm. No, no, not at all. I, to, to honestly say it, no, 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 it's a, it's a very small thing. It's a very small thing. If it happens literally, and I mean it with all sincerity, if it happens, it happens. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be happier that it happened or not. I honestly enjoy what I do. So just doing it, is what makes me happy. Not trying to be the best at it, yeah. just being able to do it and being able to live um, comfortably while doing it um, is more more than I could ask for. 
I believe true happiness will come when I have children, you know, like yeah, yeah. I cannot put a belt over my kids that I, that are unborn. That is an impossibility, sir. So just, um, you know, being the best or being champion really holds no merit in my eyes. Mm, definitely. Uh, fascinating, fascinating way of looking at it, you know, um, across the board, trying to improve yourself and all facets I, I i suppose um of life we, we how, how do you feel about the the new ufc ownership um does it bother you have you noticed something different as uh has anything changed in, in in relation to 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 your relationship with the ufc or has it been well any, before any i answer changes? those questions i gotta <laughs> let you know something okay i don't keep up and i do not watch the sport i don't know anything about whatever <laughs> is going on there i just show up to perform and that's about it so um um not to be disrespectful or anything i just i honestly don't know <laughs> has anything changed in relation you know your headline in your first ufc event against the year and um, have you noticed any changes nope nothing across the board no 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 i um no, I no, I really don't know. I, I like I said, man, I, I'm completely out of the loop. I'm barely on social media. Like people bitch at me for not posting enough. You know? uh, <laughs> so, they, they must have very just, boring lives if they, if they, if if they're worrying about your your social media. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's so much to do, man. I mean, like, come on, man, I, I got like, to, like, I gotta go to, I, I gotta climb mountains and stuff, and. You know, I gotta go outside in the desert. I mean, there's, there's so much fun things to do than looking at a screen most of the time. Although I do catch myself doing it, but really posting stuff. I mean, I look at stuff like funny videos and stuff like that. So it's just, I don't know. I'm, the internet is a, is a is a great thing, and and I think it's um the most perverted thing you can do with it is troll people online. You know, like it has all this untapped information just out there for free, and we're using it to become popular. It's ridiculous. I think we're in for a, a really exciting fight on Saturday night. Two guys, I uh, you know, I always really uh, enjoy watching your fights. We never really know what to expect. You're quite a flowy uh, sort of character and performer, as um, Conor McGregor w would say. So is Yair Rodriguez. Um, this is going to be a cracker. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's definitely something I can guarantee that it will be an exciting fight, that we're going to uh, <laughs> have some good times out there. Um, and it's going to be five rounds of some good hopefully some good high action pace um, fighting. So that's one thing that I can guarantee because it's one thing that I do do every day. So um, yeah, we're going to have some fun out there. And, you know, you, we, we'll just talk about deja vu again for, for a moment. Uh, what way, uh, what, what way have you seen this fight? I know you say you've seen it play it a, a lot of times in your head, but um, there must be one sort of prominent moment that you've seen that, that stands out for you. What, 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 what have you seen? Well, in a weird way, I had a, a weird dream a couple times where I, 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 was, I was getting knocked out or getting punched in the face really hard by me. <laughs> it took me a while to uh, realize what was happening. But in my interpretation is that I guess I was seeing the fight through my opponent's eyes as yeah. I was doing it to myself in a weird way so um um and and, and it kind of solidified the the idea that we are all one and so whatever i was doing to him i was really doing to myself so i was able to see that through his eyes so um wow. it, it was a very strange phenomena but whatever it may be like this is my interpretation anybody can interpret it however they want to maybe I can interpret it in such a way that the hardest opponent that I have to face is also just myself. There is no, yeah. there is no body else. It's just you against you. It's a paradox that binds us all. And we, and when we're out there, we're, we're in truly and honestly, if we can really look into ourselves, we're not trying to be better than anybody but ourselves. We're really facing ourselves is because it's something that we are unsure of within our own hearts mm. that we have to bring out and manifest in an actual fight. So that we can conquer ourselves. Definitely. Just one last one for you before, before I let you go. I really do appreciate the time, uh, Alex. It, it seems to me, and um, what, how would I phrase this? That your sort of your your evolution and and, and the way um, 
you said about acceptance and, and the way you've sort of maybe found yourself is that you don't really give a shit what anyone thinks anymore. Is that the main um, the main reason and the, the main trigger that, that it has, has spurred this um, this persona that we're seeing of Alex Cacheras right now? Well, yeah, you know, um, yeah, like, uh, um, I mean, it's been a long time where I said, like, I, I don't really care what anybody thinks, but I mean, really, like, yeah, at the end of the day, like, um, when you, when you got to look at it, like, I really don't, I really don't care, you know, for what really anybody thinks of me. I mean, a lot of people can call me crazy and whatnot and, and weird and eccentric or eclectic, whatever you want to call it, but, um, it's working. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, I just kind of uh, like honestly, like you got to think about it. Um, when I when when people say something about me, I just know I just know that it's it's something that they cannot accept within themselves. Like, yeah, um, this is the reason why they talk crap about you because, and then I realize that because I have to honestly ask myself why this is happening is because I've done it before. We all do it. We all judge people, yeah. and we yeah. judge people. Um, because there's something within ourselves that we dislike, that we see the same characteristics in others, so that instead of telling ourselves and being straight up with ourselves, it's much easier to tell somebody else that they're doing something wrong, you know? Definitely. Definitely. And so um, that, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the ego problem that we all have to face. And I just have to come to terms that I'm not perfect. I'll never will be perfect. I have all lots of different issues. I have lots of bugs that I got to fix within myself, but I'm not going to go put that on anybody else. You know, these are my problems and I will, they're all of our problems. You know, I'll help you try and solve these problems, but I won't try and just, um, how would you say extort those problems because I have them and I don't want to face them myself. And therefore I rather just tell you about them. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are scared, you know, a lot of people are scared of because uh, because they don't understand, and more what they don't mostly understand is themselves. So that's why you see a lot of people conform to one type of um, identity. You know, they try to be something else or try to be like everybody else because they don't want to be alone. They're afraid of being alone. Yeah. We all are. You know, we have this innate um, emotion to connect with each other, to be accepted by each other, yeah. but. And, but that also drives us to be like everybody else because we fear that being ourselves or an individual will seclude ourselves and people won't accept us because we're different from them. Fantastic, and, fantastic way. Look yeah. It. It's, 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 <laughs> we have to realize that when we, when we do be ourselves, people, well, the real people that are truly looking and listening will love and respect you for it. They, they, they want to see the individuality. I mean, a rainbow cannot be made up of one color, mm. you know, so we have to bring everybody of all shapes of life, all colors of life, everybody must be accepted. At the end of the day, we are just all humans. Mm. We're not black humans, white humans, Spanish humans, um, French, you know what I mean? We're not Arab humans. Like, we're all one race, literally. There are no different races. Mm. Just, you know, things like culture, religion, society, things that are classes that are meant to divide us, you know, are, are hindrances to humankind. Yeah. We are all life. I mean, if we really want to get deep into it, I mean, every single living animal, plant, um, rock, we are all part of life. Without it, nothing works. You know, it's like music. You you can't say this note is better than that note. You know, without the other notes, you'll never have a series of beats or rhythms. Even the pauses have to be played in music or else it will just all be a mess. Yeah, yeah 100%. Well, I tell you what, the world would be a better place with, with more people um, that had a mindset like you have uh, at the moment. Fascinating uh, inside, Alex. Listen, I'm really looking forward to the fight on uh, on Saturday night. I'm sure we're in for an absolute barn burner against uh, Riyara Rodriguez. Um, do appreciate the time, my friend. The guys can catch you on Twitter. Um, I think it's uh, at Bruce Leroy Glow. Isn't that correct, my friend? Yeah, and I'm having trouble getting on my Twitter account. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm sorry if I haven't been on in a while. Like, uh, it's asking me for, like, I don't know. Like, I guess I use fucking old. I guess somebody's been fucking around with my Twitter and or, like, maybe my email address. Or, you know, that I guess they've been fucking up and now, like, they don't believe it's me. I don't know. Maybe I got hacked or something, but whatever. Um, uh, I'm sorry that I can't get on Twitter. If you do want to get at me, please use my Instagram. I am here now. Alex, that will work a lot better. <laughs> cool. 
Excellent. So, uh, just to clear that up. <laughs> Alex, it's been a real pleasure to have you back on the show. Massively looking forward to the fight this Saturday. Do appreciate the time, my friend. All right, thank you very much.